Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that dial around to my channel and joining me as I explore the international wide world of pens. As I mentioned in a, in a few videos, I've been very fortunate to receive a number of pens. Uh, some of them I did not buy, and this is one of them. And occasionally I get emails from people saying, you want to review a pen? I'll send you one. And I say, sure, here's an email that was preceded this pen. Pen arrived relatively quickly. And let's open up this nice metal case, which I'm not certain whether all pens are come with this or not. And we'll see a pen in a cellophane sleeve. Yep, we'll remove the pen from the sleeve. We'll give you some sound effects. And we'll say that this pen has some familiarity to it. Interesting logo there at the top. It's certainly stealthy, certainly black, but some interesting little details. As we expect, the cap pulls off. Nice click. And we'll see what makes this pen different is the nib. And it's definitely a two-tone nib, but not a two-tone nib like we've seen in the past. And we'll see the identifying model there on the side of the clip. Interesting place to put it. And of course, let's take a look again at that nice logo there at the top. The one thing that's nice about the Hong Dion metal pen design is this clip is spring-loaded and it works very, very well. And the way it's designed, it'll fit over some fairly thick fabric, fit in your many pen cases. Kudos for that clip design. I'm experimenting with a new camera. It's basically like my older camera, slightly newer model, still made by Canon. But this one takes screw-on lenses, so hopefully this macro lens is doing its job. It doesn't seem to focus as close as the normal lens does, but I don't think it adds very much. But hopefully you're seeing how that black coating is on that nib. And it is a F for fine. And on the side, it doesn't seem that that nib is plated very well. There's a lot of pitting on it, which could have been related to that black coating going on. Not certain. In your typical plastic feed. So we're going to remove the macro lens because I'm not totally satisfied with it and go back to the normal lens and explore this pen a little bit more. So here's the normal lens, which focuses down to a half an inch. And I guess the macro lens really doesn't add anything. I'll see how it looks like on the computer. But, you know, I do this video for both your entertainment and for mine. And the viewfinder does not give you the resolution or the quality of image that the camera can produce. So let's take a look at the filling mechanism. Barrel and screws fairly easily. And we'll see a classic piston converter. Again, I like that nice metal band there, that insert. I'll probably take out the spring. We'll see if I can take this apart for the first time. Yeah, it unscrews. Doesn't, it takes a little bit of effort to get it off, but it doesn't actually unscrew. It's actually pushed on. So we'll pull everything out. We're going to put that spring aside. And before I put it back together again, I'll silicone grease this piston rod with that threading on it and the end of that piston seal. So the converter will work well. Here we have some pens I'm comparing to the Hong Dion H1. The obvious comparison is the Hong Dion Forest pens. This is Black Forest and this is the same pen in a nice blue finish. And here's a Picasso pen in all black. 
So the design of the H1, I think, is a little bit more sophisticated than the Black Forest uh, design. You know, I like the clean barrel here. These little fingers work for posting. Here it posts fairly high, and there's just a little bit of a reduced section to put the cap onto. The clip on all these three pens is basically the same clip. So they've... Uh, maintain the same tooling there. If you look at the top finial, we'll see all these have different top finials on them. Yes, we'll see the different designs. There's one, the, the dome is the original Black Forest that I have. The second one in blue had more of a stamped in design at the top of the cap, and this one has a more simplistic design, which is just the logo, which is on all of these three, which is that is consistent. The H1 is the only one that's labeled at the side of the clip. The Black Forest ones have an engraving at the bottom of the cap to identify the pen in the model. But all these three are nice and substantial. We're going to uncap them and take a look at the business ends. So here's an example of the four pens posted. The Black Forest ones are definitely the longest, but the H1 is not as short as I expected posted. And the Picasso one posts deeply and very well, which is what we expected based on the design. I think we need to look closely at the nibs and sections because all these have much differently designed nibs. Let's look at them. So one of the main differences is these three all have Fude style nibs. And we have two black coated nibs. Looks like they're similar coating. This one is blue, which is great because it matches the pen. And here we have two-tone with black and gold. And this is just a standard fine nib. It also comes in extra fine. So now we've come to the all-important, how does it write? And my editorial comments about the pen. So the first comment I would say is I was intrigued by this two-tone nib when I first saw it come out. There's also a solid gold nib version of this pen at a significantly higher price point, but still on the low side for a gold nib pen. What I've gotten this pen, and if it wasn't uh, provided to me for review, and that's a tough question. I just have gotten a lot of pens recently, so this probably not would have made my list, but maybe eventually it would have. Or maybe uh, one of my pen friends may have lent me theirs to do a review on it. It's solidly made as the other Hongdian metal pens are made, and a lot of the Chinese metal pens just made very, very well. It's a little on the small side, which the rest of the pens are also, but small in diameter, not in length. And I think those little knobs at the end, which kind of remind you of a Lamy 2000, work to facilitate posting. That's a very, very tight cap. And you can see those little uh, end here of the section, which fits into a plastic liner there, so it seals up very well. It's also like a Lamy Safari style design. It posts with those little fingers. You can feel that cap slide on very, very securely. And it makes for a fairly long pen. It will give you those dimensions of the pen in, in, its, in the new format that I've been using, which hopefully is beneficial to you. I've tried to now take the picture from the same distance so you can actually physically see the different sizes of the pen, in addition to seeing the actual physical measurements. The cap actually fine, works fine posted. I mean, I could definitely use this pen posted. It doesn't really change the balance much. That section's a little bit small for me, usable, but not something I'm going to be able to be comfortable with for long writing sessions. So I uh, filled this with uh, Noodler's Heart of Darkness. I have a bottle I've had for a number of years, and I've had to rebottle the uh, ink from the three ounce bottle, which made it hard to fill when it got low, to an Irishizuku bottle in which the cap had broken, not uncommon. 
and I had tried to seal it up as much as possible, but I still think a little bit of the ink evaporated out of the bottle. So this ink is a little bit thicker than normal, but I really like the black ink line that come, it's put down. So let's take a look at that. So I think you can hear this nib on paper. This probably wasn't the best ink for this pen. I should have used my Noodler's uh, Eel Black, which also is a very dark ink. You can see how quickly it dries. This is an extremely dry ink in what is probably a dry nib. The nib comes in extra fine and fine, and this is the fine nib. It dries out quickly. Again, this is not a good combination. You get to feel that nib on paper. So I think it's time to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.0. It gets one check for the build, the design, the look. It feels good in the hand. There's no step up there so you can hold it anywhere. This pen comes in many, many varieties. Here's some examples that I found. If you like a metal pen, you like a stealthy pen, any of these would work well for you. And this is available on Amazon Prime Delivery, so if you need it in a day or two, you can get it in a day or two at a very, very good price, competitive with any other of the buying platforms. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Based on YouTube, it's only about 10% of you still watching to the end, but I'm thankful for the 10%. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying putting ink on paper, finding a combination that works well for you. This is the end. And we're going to say bye. A lot more pens to go.